more breaking news on top of his report yesterday about the Clinton Foundation as the Hills John Solomon. This article means to me that if all that evidence, 6,000 pages, is that total? That's right, 6,000 pages, 95 exhibits. 95 exhibits. Okay, so now the question is, why don't we go through what they found and why we are here and why they have not been under more fire? Yeah, I, I think, first of all, it's interesting who they are, who made this complaint. These are former uh, experts for the D Drug Enforcement Agency, for uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Connecticut, uh, for major compliance for major Wall Street firms. These are people that live and breathe uh, tax law and, and uh, good governance, and uh, they put together this complaint. Uh, they assembled a lot of internal documents from the Clinton Foundation, perhaps most importantly, two legal reviews that the Clinton Foundation did on itself. And what they found is that the Clinton Foundation itself, its own lawyers, warned that there was a strong possibility that donors were being made promises of quid pro quo favors from Secretary Clinton when she was in the Obama administration in return for gifts to the foundation. They warned that there was a culture of noncompliance, not wanting to comply with the law, with the rules that the foundation had to follow. They said that Bill Clinton's personal interest and his commingling of his personal business with the foundation posed a grave threat to the foundation itself. These are not Republicans. These are not partisans saying it. These are internal documents of lawyers hired by the Clinton Foundation to find out what was going on wrong in the foundation. This is what they found. So these investigators assemble all this evidence. They then go and they interview uh, the current CFO, the longtime CFO of the Clinton Foundation, a guy named Andy Kessel. And they do this in November 16, and they, uh, they take him out to dinner or lunch in New York. And they begin asking him, hey, are there problems here? And according to their memo, their interview memo after they met with him, Kessel makes several spontaneous claims that he can't control Bill Clinton, that people have been trying to stop him from commingling personal business with the foundation, but nobody can control him. And he makes the most provocative of statements, allegedly, if you believe this memo, in which he says, I know where all the bodies are buried at the Clinton Foundation. So they assemble all this evidence. They give it to the IRS in August 16. They give it to the main Justice Department of Bill Clinton's, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Donald Trump's Justice Department in uh, October 2017. And then in early 2018, they're called by the FBI in Little Rock and they provide the evidence to the FBI in Little Rock, which means the main apparatus, the IRS and the FBI and the Justice Department, now have access to all of these allegations of wrongdoing. What is happening? I mean, six, look, John, you were talking about 6,000 pages, 95 yeah. exhibits, a 48 page submission. Um, and the evidence, as I read in your article, seems overwhelming and incontrovertible here. How has it been sitting for a year, especially in light of we already know the issue of Hillary's violation of the Espionage Act by having that mom and pop shop server? We had right. secret, top secret, classified information on it. That's a violation of the Espionage Act, obstructing justice as it relates to how she deleted emails, washed her hard drive clean, and had devices broken up. They seem to skate every time. You're describing literally systematic violations of every charitable contribution law imaginable here, including IRS violations. They're sitting on that for a year? Who's looking into it? Yeah. Well, that's a great question. I think we're going to get a very important answer. I want to put a special date on your calendar. Next Thursday, uh, Mark Meadows, Chairman Mark Meadows, the House Subcommittee on the Oversight, uh, House Oversight Committee, is going to have a hearing. There are these two whistleblowers, two of the whistleblowers who helped form this complaint and did all this investigative work, are going to testify for the first time in public. And they've asked the Justice Department to come in and say, what have you done with this? Mr. Huber, John Huber, the special U.S. attorney who President Clinton's uh, former attorney general, Bill Sessions, now uh, Jeff Sessions named a year ago. What have you done? How much money have you spent? Bob Mueller spent tens of millions of dollars. What have you done to look at these allegations? And we may get our first answer in public to what the Justice Department has done. Now, we have some hints in my story. We know that the FBI not only had contact with these whistleblowers, but I am able to confirm from Clinton Foundation sources that Kessel, the CFO, the guy who ran the finances, was interviewed by the FBI in 2017. We know that Doug Campbell, the undercover informant for the, mm -hmm. uh, that was undercover in the Russian nuclear, he was interviewed by the same was Uranium Little one. Rock FBI. Yeah, Uranium One informant. So we do see some activity, and if I had to guess from my reporting, if there is action going on, it's centered in Little Rock, Arkansas. 
But for the first time, Congress is going to put the Trump Justice Department's own officials, their feet to the fire, and we're going to get an answer. Have you done anything? How much have you spent on this? Is there illegality, or should we drop this line of inquiry with the Clinton Foundation? Next Thursday could be the day we get our answer. Um, the people that you've spoken to on the legal side, do they see laws violated? Uh, they do. And so I, I sent this to a half dozen former FBI, uh, IRS uh, experts who, who focused in charity fraud and financial fraud, and all of them said to a team, uh, if this walked into my door, it would give me a predicate for opening a criminal investigation of the Clinton Foundation and perhaps individuals inside of it. Uh, every one of them said that. Uh, I think one of them, Jeff Danik, very well, very well known, decorated FBI agent, made some of the most complex financial fraud cases in the history of the Bureau, said, I would open up on this in a second based on what these good investigators put together in this private document. Back to back, huge bombshells by John Solomon. We're going to, we're going to have you back tomorrow and the rest of the week, to, uh, into next week, to get into this.